Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in any private one-on-one -on -one tutoring, please feel free to email me directly at the address listed on the screen. Now, in part A, we have to find the acceleration of the two blocks here. And in order for us to do that, we need to draw a free body diagram for each block individually. We'll begin with the aluminum block. That free body diagram is a little bit easier. So here is the aluminum block with a mass of two kilograms, and there are several forces acting on it. Let's look at the vertical forces first. We have the gravitational force, also known as the weight, pulling down on the block. We also have the steel surface pushing up on the block. This is known as the normal force, which we will call N subscript one. And then in the horizontal direction, we have the rope that is pulling the aluminum block to the right. This is known as the tension force. And then there's also going to be friction between the aluminum block and the steel surface. So there is the free body diagram. Note that in order for us to calculate the weight, we took the mass of the aluminum block, which was two kilograms, and we multiplied it by G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's where that 19.6 is coming from. Next, let's take a look at the free body diagram of the copper block. So here is the free body diagram of the copper block. Note again that the gravitational force is pulling downward on the copper block. We've gone ahead and computed that value by once again multiplying the mass times 9.8. That's where this 58.8 newtons is coming from. Now, if you go back and look at the picture, the copper block is on this tilted incline and the rope is pulling the copper block up even as the copper is sliding down the ramp. So you do have this tension force pulling up on the copper block. Similarly, there is a frictional force between the two surfaces resisting the motion. So the copper is trying to slide down the ramp. The friction is resisting that, so it's pulling it up the ramp. And then, of course, we have the steel surface pushing perpendicularly upward on the copper block, and that, again, is that normal force. There's an important angle here for us to understand, and it's this 30 degree angle right here. We can begin to understand that by looking at this sort of right triangle right here. And the question noted that this angle was 30, and of course it's a right triangle, so this angle right here is going to be 90 degrees. Since the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180, this angle up here would have to be 60 degrees, but the angle marked is going to be 30 because right here between the y-axis and the x-axis we have another 90 degree angle. So if this is 60, then this angle over here is going to be 30. So that's just a brief explanation of where that 30 degree angle is coming from. Now that we have the free body diagrams in place for each block, we have to now use Newton's law, Newton's second law, in each direction. So for example, if we go back to the aluminum block, we're going to be doing the sum of the forces acting along the x direction is equal to the mass of that aluminum block times its acceleration. Now look at the x direction and you will see that though that direction contains two forces. We have the tension force, T1, and then we have the frictional force which is pointing to the left. So that's actually going to be minus F1. And then this is equal to M1 multiplied by the acceleration of the aluminum block. That would be in the x direction. We're going to kind of hold on to this equation and refer back to it. Now we do the same idea in the y direction. So the sum of the forces in the y direction will equal the mass of this aluminum block times the acceleration in the y direction. We've got the upward normal force, so that's N1. We have the downward weight, so that's minus 19.6. This is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now, ask yourself, is the aluminum block accelerating in the y direction? And the answer is no. So the acceleration in that y direction is actually zero. This actually makes the right-hand side of the equation zero. So now we have N1 minus 19.6 is equal to zero. You can add 19.6 to the other side, and we've actually solved for that normal force on the first block. That may come in handy. So we'll circle that and perhaps refer back to it soon enough. Now we have to go back and do the same thing for the copper block. We can go to the sum of the forces in the x direction and set this equal to m2 multiplied by the acceleration in the x direction. Now, there are several forces acting in the x direction. The two more obvious ones are the tension and the frictional force. These are pointing up the ramp, which we've assigned as the negative x direction. But then there's also a component of gravity. 
And in order for us to see that, we would want to break that gravitational force into the X and the Y components. So for instance, if we drew a vector this way, this would be the Y component of the gravitational force. And if we draw a vector this way, we have the X component. Now, right now we're concerned with the X direction. So we kind of want to find this. Maybe we could just call this W2 subscript X because it is the X component. Now we look at this and we see that we have ourselves a nice right triangle right here. And we've got that 30 degree angle. Now notice opposite of that 30 degree angle is W2 X. And then the hypotenuse of that right triangle is the 58.8 Newtons. So we can use the sine function because the sine of that 30 degree angle would equal the X component of the weight or gravitational force divided by the hypotenuse, which is 58.8 Newtons. Now, if you multiply both sides of that equation by 58.8 Newtons, you're going to get 58.8 Newtons times the sine of 30 is going to be the X component of that weight. Now we might as well just plug that into our calculator now. And when we do that, we're going to get 29.4. So that's the value of that X component of gravity. It's 29.4. We can now put all three forces into the sum of the forces in the X direction. Notice that X component that we just found is pointing down the ramp. That was in the positive X direction. So we would have that 29.4 Newtons. And then the other two forces, tension and the frictional force, are going to be negative. So we're going to have minus tension and then minus the frictional force of that other block. This equals the mass of this block, which is 6, times its acceleration. Notice we've used just T for tension. We actually inadvertently said T1 in the other diagram or the other equation. That should just be T. They actually have the same tension. This was actually a key part of this problem. Uh, the tension is the same for each block because there's just one rope connecting them. So whatever the tension is for this piece of the rope is going to be the same as the tension for the other piece. So there's no need to say T1 or T2 or anything like that. You could just use T. So this would be the equation we have in the X direction. Let's now go look at the Y direction. Okay, so there are two forces in the Y direction. Perhaps we can circle them in a different color. We'll use blue. We have the normal force right here, and then we have the Y component of the weight or the gravitational force. Now, we could also use trigonometry to find that Y component right there. We could use the cosine function. Notice this side of our yellow right triangle would be the W2 subscript Y. So it's kind of the Y component of the weight or the gravitational force. So using the cosine function, we would have cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is the W2Y, over the hypotenuse, which is the 58.8. Now again, multiply both sides of the equation by 58.8, and then you would find that on the left side, you get about 50.9. So 50.9 Newtons is the Y component of that weight. Now we can plug into the sum of the forces in the Y direction. So this is Newton's second law once again. This equals m2 times acceleration. We have the normal force pointing up the positive y-axis and then minus that y component of the gravity force. So that's minus the 50.9. This equals the mass, which is 6, times the acceleration. Now, once again, ask yourself, is the copper block accelerating in the y direction? The answer is no. So this is actually just zero for that acceleration. That means the entire right side is equal to zero. And then we can actually add the 50.9 to the other side. We actually now have the normal force for that second block, which may come in handy. Now we have the normal forces, but the question didn't want the normal forces. It wanted the acceleration of the two blocks. So we still have some work cut out for ourselves here. Let's return to this equation here for block one as well as this equation right here. Those two equations contain the acceleration, so they're probably going to come in handy here. Now, we can start filling in more information here in this equation we developed for the first block. We know that the frictional force is going to be a coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by a normal force. We also know the mass of that aluminum block was two kilograms, so we can put that in here. 
In the other equation, it's very similar. We have 29.4 minus the tension. The frictional force is going to be the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. And then this is equal to 6a. Now, there are some coefficients of friction that are listed in your textbook. There's a table right here that we can utilize for these coefficients of friction. Now, we're going to need two different values. We have aluminum on steel, and then we have copper on steel. So aluminum on steel, the coefficient of kinetic friction is right there, and then copper on steel is right beneath it. So those are the values we're going to be using. So let's plug them in. We would have T minus, the first block was aluminum, so that's going to be 0.47 multiplied by that normal force that we found fortuitously earlier, so that's 19.6. And this is equal to 2a. Over here, we have 29.4 minus the tension minus the other coefficient of friction multiplied by the other normal force. And this is equal to 6a. Now we are getting really close to getting these uh, acceleration values. And we can perhaps simplify our equation. We can multiply the 0.47 by the 19.6, and we get 9.21 approximately. And then for the other equation, we can multiply the 0.36 and the 50.9. We get about 18.3. Now to solve this, there's a nice little trick. We can actually copy this equation, paste it underneath the other equation, and add the equations together. This is kind of cool how this will work. We add these together. The right side just becomes 8a. And on the left side, the positive tension here and the minus tension there would actually cancel out. And then we could combine or you know, add this, the negative 9.21 and the negative 18.3. So if we add these all together, we are going to end up with 1.89 on this side. And then you just divide both sides by 8 and you get an acceleration of about 0.24 meters per second squared. So this would be the correct answer for the acceleration, which was part A of this question. And then we also need the tension in the string. We could use any of our equations that we've already developed, either this one for tension or this one. Probably the first one is easier. So let's come down here. We have tension minus 9.21 equals six, excuse me, equals two times the acceleration, which we just found. And now we just multiply out on the right side and then add the 9.21 to both sides. We get the tension is equal to 9.68 newtons. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.